What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today, we have a very special topic. I'm extremely fired up about it and I'm just gonna go ahead and warn you right now. This is a tough love alert. We're here to talk about how to be financially responsible. And I'll tell you this, being financially responsible is purely just a mindset. And the mindset that I would like to leave the video with is the mindset that I tell everyone they should have. Because the way I think about life is everything in life that happens, good or bad, within my own life is my fault. If I'm late to work because I got a flat tire, that's my fault. Did I go too long without changing my tires and now as a result they got weaker and then boom, flat tire? What was the reason, right? And so it's the same exact thing with personal finances. So if I'm not where I wanna be financially, that's my fault. Therefore, I have a responsibility to change it because no one's gonna just fall out of the sky and say, here you go, here's a million bucks, all right, later, and then head out, like that's not what's gonna happen. You can't expect for a raise or promotion at work to just come out of thin air here you go, here's an extra 10 G's a year. And like, even though that might happen to some people, we have to understand that $10,000 more a year is helpful, but it is not, I repeat, not going to change your life to a point where you don't have to worry about anything anymore. There's always gonna be a worry in the back of your head. And part of that worry is not being financially responsible with the money that you do have. And that's not being able to manage it properly. That's not being able to get out of debt, not being able to save the amount of money that you need to save in your savings account or your emergency fund. That's not having money on the side working for you. And if you wanna get dialed in on these things, check out my previous video. It's called How to Manage Money and it is the only personal finance video that you will ever need. Check it out, I'll link it up here. But the bottom line of making sure that you're financially responsible is having your priorities straight for the love of God. And I'm mainly talking to people, you know, between the ages of like 20 to 35. Look, I know y'all like to have fun. I know y'all like to enjoy yourselves. But to me, if you're in a less than desirable financial situation, right? And you're off work and it's a weekend and you're spending the whole day playing video games and you're not even focused on bettering yourself, you're not focused on learning a new skill, you're not focused on earning some more money, and you're just content with kicking back with your feet up, playing video games, eating Doritos, your priorities ain't straight. Am I demonizing video games? No. Do I like playing video games? Sometimes. But me, I'm in a good position and I still don't spend that much time playing video games because I'm so into what I'm doing and I'm so into my purpose and what I'm doing in life that video games don't appeal to me as much as what I'm doing right now, the business that I'm building right now, what I'm doing in my career right now. Those things are so much more important and engaging and fulfilling than any video game. But that's just an example. Your thing might not be video games. Your thing might be drinking at bars. Your thing might be going to parties, dancing. But you can't come to me crying like some people have done in the past about how bad their financial situation is, how they want to be making more money, how they wish they made six figures a year and all these things, right? But then you could be making half that and just chilling on the weekend when you're not even trying to better yourself. What do you expect? That's the first part of being financially responsible is taking it upon yourself, taking that initiative and saying, hey, no one's gonna change my financial situation but me. I can't blame the government. I can't blame politics. I can't blame who's in office. I can't blame any of that on the amount of money that I'm making right now. I need to get out and go get it for myself. There are no excuses. I don't care what gender you are, what race you are, none of that matters. You have to get up and go get a skill and learn how to make money. And once you do that, you can learn how to scale. But first, you need some money coming in which most of us have already done. And here's where being financially responsible comes into play. Whether or not you're making good money, let's say you're making some good money right now, right? If you're not financially responsible, you're no different than someone who can't make enough money and wishes they had enough. Why? Because let's say you're making 120,000 grand a year, you're over here, and then your friend over here is making 40 grand a year, right? Inflation's up like crazy, rent's going up for this person. I mean, this person right here, they're just like, they're wishing they made more money. They're 
They're praying that they get some overtime at work next week. They're hoping that they get some form of a bonus or some money coming out of the sky to give them some extra money. And these numbers are just examples, obviously relative to where you live at. If you live in a high cost of living area, then yeah, 40 grand is not gonna feel like a lot. And 120 grand might not even feel like a lot. But if you have a low cost living area, still, we're talking about someone who's making significantly less, like literally a third of what you're making right here, right? So basically, they may be doing everything right. They may be saving, they may be working to get out of their debt, they may make sure that their car is paid off and stuff like that, but still, they're right here. Their salary and their expenses are right here. Just trying to make ends meet, hoping they can put a little something together at the end of the month to have in their savings account. But if you're over here and you're making 120 grand a year, you can live below your means and then just stack up like crazy with the extra amount of money that you're bringing in. Because let me tell you something, you weren't always making 120, but are you financially responsible? Because if not, you might say, oh, well, I can buy this, I can buy this, I can buy that new Camaro, I can buy that new Mercedes. I can buy that new TV. I can go out to my favorite restaurant every single week. I can buy that new furniture. I can buy that new mattress. There's no need to budget because I'm making all this money. Uh, by the time the next paycheck comes in, I'm still going to have a good amount of money in my bank account. So now you're not even looking at your expenses. And then before you know it, you look at the end of the year and you actually spent way more than you ever thought you did because you weren't looking and you got comfortable. You're not in a much different situation than that person that's making 40 grand, barely making ends meet when you're making 120 grand a year, just spending frivolously for no reason. That's what I mean by financially responsible. Do you really tie your finances to the responsibilities that you have in life? If you have kids, do you tie your finances to your responsibilities that you have for them? Do you have a family that you want to have in the future that doesn't exist yet that you're tying your financial responsibilities with? Because that's what I'm doing. That's what I've always done. I'm telling you what, as soon as I started making my first dollar for myself, working a full-time job, I was like, okay, I got to start thinking about my future family, my future wife, all these things that don't exist yet. I was thinking about these things, all these things that haven't happened yet. I was thinking about these things. I was thinking about the future and I was thinking about the right now. That's what dominated my mind. It makes you think about, okay, this is how much money I'm making right now. How much money do I need to be making to provide the lifestyle that I want to give my future family as well as myself? How much money do I need to have in my savings account to make sure that I have X amount of time that if the most catastrophic thing ever happened, that we would be good for some years or at least six months to a year? That's being financially responsible. It all starts in your mindset and it all starts with how you're thinking about these things. It's thinking like, well, I'm young right now. I have all the time in the world to have fun if that's something that I truly want to be. But it is just straight up irresponsible to be focused on making fun a priority when I know good and well I'm not where I need to be. Does that make sense to you? If you're in school and you're making straight C's and D's and then you're like, well, I'm going to prioritize fun. Do you really think that's going to help your GPA? If you want to be an all-star in basketball and you're the worst one on the team and you're not spending your weekends practicing to get better when everybody else is partying, do you really think that's going to help you at your game? So I know those two answers were very easy for you to come up with. Well, of course not. That's not going to help. Exactly. Exactly. So if you're not where you want to be financially and you're not making the amount of money you want to be making at work and you're not managing your money that you do have as well as you can be doing, why are you not putting in the work to make yourself better? Because having fun is just that. It's fun. There's nothing wrong with having fun, but to prioritize it over the well-being of your finances and your overall lifestyle, that is a mistake. And then to tell yourself things like, well, I deserve this. Why do you deserve this? You put in absolutely no work. Why do you deserve this? Because you're a good person? Because you have a pulse? Like, no, everybody thinks they deserve so much. How about putting in the work and then talking about what you earned? That's how you become financially responsible. You become financially responsible by looking at every set of financial frustrations that you have, every set of pain points that you have, looking at them dead in the face, writing them down, and then making an action plan to fix every single one of those things. But that's not fun though, right? No one wants to look in the mirror and accept their flaws, but what if I told you we could do something about it? What if I told you I can put this mirror in front of you and tell you about yourself and then formulate a way for you to fix every single thing on that list and then you walk away a happy man or woman? What if I told you doing this consistently and getting into the best financial shape of your life, you can then go and have all the fun you want to have guilt-free? 
I'll tell you what, you're not going to find me playing no video games or in the club if I'm in a less than financially desirable situation. I don't even like those things that much anyway. So even with me being in a pretty freaking good financial situation, you're not going to find me doing those things because I'm always looking for ways to better myself and my future and my family's future and my future family's future and all that stuff because I'm thinking about the next generations. It's not all about me. It's not all about just sustaining or staying above water. I was not born for that. I wasn't freaking put on this earth to go to school, get a good job, go to work, pay some bills, stay above water and then and then die. That's not what I was put on this earth for. And neither were you. So I simply will not accept that type of behavior from myself. I will not do those things. Everything that I do in my life, every second I can put toward bettering myself, that's what I'm going to do. I could come off a 12-hour shift, come home, work for two more hours for myself, go to sleep, wake up two hours early, put another two hours in for myself, then go back to work. And then on my weekend, spend most of it working on myself. But the thing is, I have times where I do have that balance, where I do take a day for myself, where I do decide to treat myself or whatever the case is. But I make sure I have those financial systems in place to make sure I can afford the opportunity to enjoy myself, to have fun. But you can't do any of that if you're not financially responsible in the first place. And what happens is we overindulge in fun. We overindulge in our vices and the things that we find enjoyable, whether that's desserts, whether that's clubs, whether that's alcohol, whether that's video games, whether that's whatever entertainment source that is entertaining to you. We all have vices and we all have things that we want to do in our downtime. It could even be reading books like fiction and stuff like that. It can be that type of thing that you can overindulge in. My point is you're putting yourself into a world that you do not belong in for a prolonged amount of time purely because you deserve it. Meanwhile, your financial situation is the exact same. Your frustrations are the exact same. The fears that you have in the back of your mind are the same. You can barely sleep at night. And the sad thing is you may actually be making really good money. And yet you have all these stresses. You don't know how many people I've talked to that make 80, 85, 90, 92,000 a year who are living paycheck to paycheck, who have made a bunch of bad financial decisions. And then if something happens at work, oh my God, now all of a sudden they're afraid that they're going to go under, they're going to go bankrupt because they lost their job. What does that tell you? That tells me that not a lot of people are financially responsible. Why? Now, some of it is just they haven't been taught. That's fine. But now that you're an adult, and this is the second thing I was going to say, now that you're an adult, it's your responsibility. We can't blame it on our teacher from kindergarten. We can't blame it on our professors in college. We can't blame it on anybody from high school. We can't blame it on our parents for not teaching us these things. Maybe they didn't know themselves. But now that you're an adult and you know where you're at and you know what you need to change, now you need to look them up to change them. We have Google. We have information out the wazoo. And what are we doing? We're prioritizing fun over bettering ourselves? I can have fun later. Are you kidding me? And then we say, oh, well, life isn't all about money. Well, it kind of, literally the world revolves around it. You can't do anything really without it. You can't get health care without it. Not in America, you can't. You can't get food without it. You can't get water, a roof over your head. There's so many things you need money for. Don't hit me with that. It's not all about the money. I'm not saying to live your whole life for money. I'm saying to get your life together and then become financially responsible, become financially stable, make a list, get those things knocked out, live your life. I'm not telling you you have to be the next Warren Buffett. I'm not telling you you have to be a millionaire. I'm not even telling you you have to make six figures a year. I'm saying learn how to be smart with the money that you do have and be grateful with the money that you do have and be smart with the money that you do have. Take the stress, take the thinking, take the mental capacity out of personal finances and be responsible and be an adult and understand that everything that does happen in your life is your fault. Your kids don't have food to eat. Whose fault is that? It's not their fault. You don't have furniture. Whose fault is that? You're not making enough at your job. Whose fault is that? What are you, and it's not about saying, oh, well, it's my fault, so woe is me. No, no, it's saying it's my fault, so here's what I'm going to do to fix it. Or even if it's some external factor that's put you in this position, even if it's not your fault, whose responsibility is it to fix it? Who's going to come out of nowhere and just give you the money that you've never seen before? You think you're just going to go and then win the lottery and win the Powerball? And you know, the crazy thing is, even if you did win the lottery and you did win the Powerball, if you didn't know how to handle 50 grand a year, what makes you think you can handle 50 million, 500 million? How many people have won the lottery and then they're back in the same exact situation 10 years from then? To be financially responsible, you have to think about 
the present, and the future. But if you only think about the present, you're going to be like, oh, well, I can buy this right now. I can buy the car of my wildest dreams right now. Not understanding how taxes work, not putting in the time and the effort to learn about personal finances and to learn about taxes and to learn about how to make your money work for you. And all of these things that can be learned about money is such a multifaceted system. But we're wasting time focusing on fun, focusing on music, focusing on video games, focusing on dancing, focusing on being cool, focusing on being fresh, focusing on going to the mall, focusing on just owning things that we don't need. Why do we focus on these things? And then you shame the person who is working hard to better themselves every single day without fail. Every single day they're eating clean. Every single day they're in the gym. Every single day they're reading books. Every single day they're learning some information. They're reading articles. They're learning how the stock market works. They're learning how money works. They're learning what tax bracket they're in. They know how much to expect that they're going to get back during tax season or how much they have to pay during tax season. They understand all these things and you want to call them things like lame. Nah, they just got their priorities straight. Where are your priorities at? You know what's lame? Not being financially responsible and you're a grown behind man or woman. That's what's lame. What's lame is having all the money you could ever need to pay for your bills, your expenses, your wants, your needs, and everything, but then spending so stupidly on things that your money does not belong to and then not being able to cover everything and then living paycheck to paycheck or even going negative. That's what's lame. Not knowing how to manage your money. As adults, we have to take responsibility for our skills and for things that we need in life. Like at work, you're responsible for performing or, or they're going to let you go. What kind of a business is going to let someone who is less than what they need stick around and they're paying you? Nah, go on somewhere. You're not an asset anymore. Go on ahead somewhere. That's how businesses think. And that's how you need to think about your financial habits. If it's not serving you, if it's not bringing money into your pocket, it needs to go on somewhere or at least go on the back burner and not be a priority. Last time I checked, having fun is not a freaking priority. It's something that's cool. It's something we can do every now and then. But why does it have to be a priority? Why does it have to be a non-negotiable to do every single weekend? And it's not just for like one day. It's for like two or three days, however long your weekends are. Nine to fives are going away and you're seeing more of the two, three, two schedules going in as manufacturing continues to, to build. But my point is, why can't you spend more time working to improve yourself and working to improve your financial situation, learning how to manage your money. And then once you learn how to manage your money, okay, cool, I got the basics down. What else is there to learn about money? Oh, you can make money in your sleep. How do I do that? Boom. Now I learned another skill. Budgeting and saving actually isn't that hard. I can automate those things. Cool. I didn't know that. Boom. I didn't realize I could turn $10,000 into $100,000 in, in 10 years. How do I do that? I didn't realize I could save money on taxes by doing this. And that's part of why my Patreon exists. I want to teach y'all stuff that I'm not teaching up here. That's why I have my book, because I'm teaching y'all stuff that I don't talk about on this channel. I, I really just want you to remember that at the end of the day, you're an adult who is responsible for your own financial situation. And as an adult, you have to understand this one thing. You have to have the fire inside of you to get to where you need to get to despite any external circumstances or anything. It doesn't matter that it may not seem that you're going to get to where you want to go five years from now. All that matters is what you're doing to get to where you want and where you need to go in the future and how relentless you are about it. Where is that fire? Forget about what you can't control and worry about what you can control. That's the biggest part where we mess up at. We think about, oh, well, the government, the politics and blah, blah, blah and inflation and gas. Gas didn't make you go broke. Better go on somewhere with that mess. Tell somebody who wants to hear it. I don't want to hear that mess. Live below your means. Learn how to be frugal when needed. You don't have to be frugal forever, like every day for the rest of your life, but you need to get your life together and you need to be financially responsible. And sometimes you have to take a step back with your expenses. And sometimes you have to really in intentionally lay out where your money's gonna go every single month and really put yourself on a restriction and put yourself on a budget and control everything you do and track everything you do and really think about what's important. And the reason you're tracking, the reason you're being so strict on yourself is because you're making your actual priorities, priorities for real this time. And guess where fun is? It's at the freaking end of that list because we're here to be adults at the end of the day. I can see why a kid's priority might be to have fun. But as an adult, you have way more job functions. You have way more responsibility. And I expect every single person who wants to better themselves to put their priorities first and put fun in the back burner. I enjoy having fun as well. So I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm just 
some stiff person wearing suits all the time and reading books and not wanting to talk to nobody. That ain't how I am. But I am saying I have taken the steps necessary from a young age to get to where I want to be and get my life together so that I can afford myself the ability to have as much fun as I want to. And I'm not done improving myself and I'm not done improving my finances. And I hope that you got something out of this video. It's really a fiery slash passionate video, but I'm saying all these things to really get in front of the audience that I want to talk to. I really want my message to come across because a lot of times we do make enough money. Everyone's so quick to say we don't make enough money. A lot of times we actually do. A lot of times we just don't make enough good financial decisions. Anyway, check out my how to manage your money video. You will really, really like it if you like this one. It'll take you down a list of videos that you can then binge watch to get to where you want to be financially. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.